Okay, you've seen us shoot our giant handguns. Now let's shoot some tiny handguns. This is the North American Arms 22 Magnum Mini Revolver. There's several different versions, but this is the Magnum. You pull our cylinder retention pin out, and then you just load it with the loose rounds right into the cylinder. Obviously, the loading and unloading process on this is kind of slow. So whatever problem you have, you better handle it with the five rounds that are in the gun. This gun is tiny, and a lot of people will tell you it's hard to hit with. And it can be. Let's see how it works. Okay, missed one, and that's about seven yards. So, not too bad. This is a Beretta Model 21A. The new ones have black plastic grips. This is an old school one with the wooden grips. Seven shot magazine. It's a double to single action 22 long rifle. Neat little twist, it's got a pop up barrel. You load your first round just like a single shot shotgun so you don't have to work your slide. Let's see how this goes. That was a whole lot easier than the single action 22 revolver. But as you can see, it's just a little bit bigger. Okay, this is an old Browning 25 auto. Now 25 is a bigger number than 22, but it's not necessarily more powerful. However, it's a center fire, so it can be a little more reliable than the 22. It's got a six shot magazine. Now this is a true single action. It's cocked and you have to carry it on safety in your pocket. Let's see how it does. Okay, not too bad. Now some people say a 25 is a lot weaker than a 22. Not out of a little gun like this. And as you could see, it did just about as much damage to the bottles as the 22 did. Okay, this is a Ruger LCP 380 Auto. It's one of many versions of a 380 minigun you can get these days. Caltech makes one, Smith & Wesson, Car Arms, there's a whole bunch of them out there. This one's a nice pink color, technically raspberry, but they come in several colors. There's the standard black and a really nice green. Six shot magazine. It's a striker action like a Glock. It's a no frills gun, so the sights are very understated. There's no slide lock back, and it can be kind of difficult to shoot. But if you practice enough with it, it's not bad. Okay, this is Smith & Wesson's version of the same thing. It costs about $100 more than the Ruger, but for that you get much bigger, higher visibility sights. You get a magazine that has a foot on it so you can get just a little bit better grip, and it comes equipped from the factory with a laser sight. I don't like this laser sight. I don't think it's a really good one, but it's there if you do like it. This is also a true double action, so it has second strike capability in case you have a misfire. Let's see how this one works. Not bad. For the extra hundred bucks, I think it's worth the money. Okay, this is a Smith & Wesson Model 36. It's a five-shot 38 Special Revolver. There are lots of revolvers like this on the market. The Smith & Wesson their Model 36 is pretty much the basis by which all the others are judged. It's a lot more powerful than those little automatics and those little tiny revolvers we showed you, so we switched to bigger targets. As you can see, this gun packs a lot more punch than a lot of the other miniguns. Now this is a different Model 36. It's nickel plated. A lot of people think that guns like this can't shoot very far or very accurately. These targets behind me are about 50 yards away. Let's see how we do with this. That's a pretty smooth gun. You know, I've never actually shot this gun before. Okay, that was 50 yards, and you gotta remember, I've never fired this particular gun before. Somebody just handed it to me a minute ago. I got one flyer, and the rest are all pretty centered. 
these guns will shoot a lot farther and a lot more accurate than people think. And also, the Model 36, and all Smith & Wessons for that matter, I don't really need to shoot every single one of them to be able to hit with it. That kind of consistent quality is what you get when you spend the extra money and buy a Smith & Wesson. Okay, so we've shown a bunch of small guns, but the really cool thing about these small guns is that they're so small. Small enough that you can carry several of them. Small enough you can have them in multiple pockets. Small enough you can carry all kinds of guns. Oh, did I mention I have two of these? Small enough, you can pull them out of everywhere. Hell, there's almost no limit to how many of these you can carry. I love playing with small guns. That's why I have so many of them. So, two things. One, don't do this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And two, thanks for watching the Disaster Contingency Specialist's Miniature Gun Shoot.